from uh, Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Nicaragua. And then they have customers again for the movie. They have customers for their old movie. Movie got tired. Most Americans got tired of that movie. Then you had the molestation scandal. And so the churches started to thin out. The movie got old and it got a little stale and people stopped going. But meanwhile, the edifices are there. They're very, very expensive edifices. You've got to fill the theater somehow. So you've got to get a whole new audience for that, for that show. They know where to go for the audience. And the same thing is going on in the, the, the Jewish religion. Most modern Jews are not religious. I mean, they, yeah, they, they're, they're culturally Jewish, but they don't really believe in anything. Yeah, once a year they'll practice a holiday to light a candle. They'll go to see their uh, grandfather in a, in a nursing home around the holiday. But the majority of uh, American Jews are not at all religious. They don't even identify with their religion, to be frank with you, and we all know that. So where are they going to get new, new people in that religion? I don't know. You import them? Uh, immigration? You know, religion itself is the question. If you want to know the truth, Trump touched on something interesting. He said, ban all Muslims. I'm telling you that the whole issue of religion needs to be discussed in America. Maybe we're living with an outdated model to begin with. You mean just because somebody calls something a religion makes it a religion? How about that for, for a statement to, to chew on for a while? If a man comes along with a book that he writes, and in this book he says, I want to kill anybody who doesn't practice my form of uh, belief. Anyone who doesn't practice my form of belief is a bad person who should be killed or have his throat cut. Uh, I don't like women because I'm a misogynist. So I want to destroy a young girl's opportunity to have any sexual pleasure. I'm going to do things to her body. Uh, let's see what else we can put in there. You get the picture where you say, that's not a religion. They can't have that in a pluralistic country like ours. Okay, really? All right. Well, I'm glad that book doesn't exist. I am so glad that such a religion doesn't exist because I wouldn't want it practiced in my beautiful, advanced nation. Would you? Now, we know that doesn't exist. It's only in the minds of Donald Trump. It's only in the minds of Donald Trump that there's a religion that preaches these things and says, by the way, things about the infidel that you won't believe. Now, having said that, let's be real. Let's be very real and let's draw a strong firewall between what you think I'm saying and what I'm actually saying. Most Muslims, most, the great majority of Muslims, statistically, absolutely abhor terrorism. Do they? I'll be back. We'll read the polls on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. Dear media, the San Bernardino terrorists were from which religion? Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, or, or Islam. Dear media types attacking Donald Trump, tell me what was found inside the terrorist woman's mother's car. Did you catch up with the news yet? Car registered to the mother of the vermin who shot those people up. They found GoPro packaging. That's a camera, folks, in the media to uh, broadcast the killings. A hammer and vice grips found by the FBI in a car belonging to San Bernardino shooter's mother. Did you know that Mama, Mommy Dearest, Muslim Mama Dearest, live with her son and daughter-in-law, those who massacred 14 last Wednesday? You know that this wonderful, wonderful, peaceful woman lived in the same house as where the couple amassed thousands of rounds of ammo and built pipe bombs? Did you know the FBI agents found these items in Mama Dearest's car? She's not been charged, by the way. Attorney General Lynch says she can't charge her. No, but she can charge you for hate speech. Where is Mama Dearest? Where is Rafia Farouk today? On a vacation somewhere? They searched in the wake of the massacre. And uh, apparently our Attorney General is not concerned as to what was found in Mommy Dearest's Lexus. But she's concerned with what is found in your speech. Now you understand why Trump is surging in the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. We 
have places in London and other places that are so radicalized that the police are afraid for their own lives. Uh, we have to be very smart and very vigilant. Welcome to uh, the unreality show of the Savage Nation. So we had a terrorist attack last week, and right away they're attacking Donald Trump rather than the mother or the father or even the terrorists themselves. The left hates Trump more than they do the terrorists who killed so many last week. The left is so insane that the vitriol that they should have, let us say, feasted upon the vermin who did this there instead of throwing it at, at Trump. Speaking of that attack last week, did you know that the... The um, murderer, the man murderer, left out his jacket. He went there, had an argument at the banquet, and then he left leaving his jacket behind. Do you know why he left his jacket behind? Raise your hand if you know why he did that. It was staged. He wanted to get away with mass murder. He thought that the planned explosion from the pipe bombs would have obliterated the remains, but they would have found his jacket, and they would have said, well, he died with the others. The terrorist is dead. They were trying to escape these two pieces of garbage. And the mother, the mother, Mommy Dearest, who lived in the apartment with the terrorists. Mommy Dearest, did you hear what they found in Mommy Dearest's car? And Obama hasn't had her arrested yet. You hear this? Loretta Lynch, who wants to arrest you for speech, has not arrested Mommy Dearest or, or Papa Dearest. Saeed Farouk, not arrested. Even though he gave an uh, interview with uh, La Stampa in, in Italy, where he said he knew his son had been radicalized. Now it turns out Mommy Dearest, Rafia, who lived with them, did you hear what they found in a car? Oh, you've been focused on what Trump said? They found GoPro packaging for the cameras, a hammer, and vice grips were pulled out of Mommy Dearest's car. Alexis, by the way. They were doing very, very well indeed in America. Came here, hated America from the second they got on the plane. And they plotted this and they did it. They lived in the same house with the mother. And she didn't know anything about it. No, no, no. Rafia Farouk has not been charged. But Attorney General Lynch said that her possible knowledge of involvement is being looked at very closely. I wonder if she's going to have time to look at Farid, uh, Rafia Farouk's relationship to her son and daughter-in-law with all of her busy uh, time is spent uh, attacking Chicago police. And anyone in America who dares say one word that she doesn't like about Islam. So that's the beginning of hour number two. And there's no better place for me to begin about this Donald Trump controversy than with the Donald Trump controversy. And we played his speech in the last hour. And Trump knows what's going on. In fact, this is not what he said that set off the shockwave. But you should hear clip number five. Robert, play that one. We are at war with radical Islamic terrorism. Right, we not are at war all whether Islam. you like it or whether you not don't like all it. Islam. We have a president that made a fool out of himself the other night. He doesn't even mention the term. He refuses to use the term. That's Perry Como's son, uh, the one who didn't know how to sing or went into television, whatever his name is. He was trying to interrupt Trump. So then Trump calls for a shutdown of Muslims entering the U.S. in clips. Let's hear clip three, the short version of his statement. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. We have no choice. We have no choice. Well, that set the libs off. They went insane. The anti-free speech monsters went insane and attacked them, obviously. Now Britain is considering banning him for something he said about police being afraid to go into neighborhoods in Britain, which is very interesting. And I want to go back in time for a moment, and I want to play for you a tape from 2009 when I woke up and found out that I was banned from entering Britain. There's a reason I'm doing it. One is to glorify myself, because that's my job. If I'm not for myself, who will be? But it's also to show you the broader problem of what happens when somebody says something in the West today that's on the side of nationalism, borders, language, and culture. Let's hear it. Among those excluded, two mint leaders of a violent Russian skinhead gang, a former Ku Klux Klan grand wizard and a neo-Nazi, but also a radio talk show host. Now, I will say this, that when I awoke this morning in the 7 o'clock range and went down to my computer, I 
turned on various websites. I was shocked, and I thought I was seeing things when it said that um, Michael Savage banned in England. I said, am I seeing? So the first thought I had was, darn, there goes the summer trip to receive their uh, their dental care. And then I'm going to have to give up my summer trip where I was going to do a tour of British restaurants for their famous cuisine. But then it dawned on me who they had linked me with. I thought this is a joke or a mistake. They linked me up with Russian skinheads who had murdered 10 people, uh, Islamists who had smashed in the heads of Jewish children with rifle butts, preachers in the U.K. who called for the destruction and overthrow of the government. How could they put Michael Savage in the same league with mass murderers when I have never avowed Violence. Had I avowed violence, I wouldn't be on the radio. I wouldn't have lasted 15 minutes. In fact, my opinions are more in keeping with the mainstream of America than you would like to believe. I want to remind you, though, that the uh, whole point of the First Amendment, which we enjoy in America and apparently these uh, Brits do not enjoy, is to protect offensive speech, not polite speech. Let me repeat that. The whole point of the First Amendment was to protect offensive speech, not polite speech and I want to remind you liberals whatever happened to your famous sayings from the 60s I may uh, disagree with you but I will fight to the death you're right to say it will they ban my listeners from attending uh, going to their wonderful great nation as well I mean I've been banned from Britain I I hadn't planned on going there I hadn't been there in over 25 years and uh, when I woke up this morning I thought this this can't be true But the point is, today it's me, tomorrow it's someone else. And my second reaction was that the land of the Magna Carta has now become the land of the Mini Carta. They published 16 of the 22 names of those banned from England since October. But they didn't include six additional names. Right? Now, I'd like to know who it is who put together this list. I'd like to know which six names are not being published. I'd like to know why they have not banned, for example, Kim Jong-il the third, the second, who allegedly has starved over a million of his own fellow countrymen to death. Is Kim Jong-il banned from England? What about Chavez? Hugo Chavez, is he banned from England? He has driven half the Jews out of uh, his nation with his hate talk. Is he banned by Home Secretary Jackie Smith? No, she picked an easy target. She doesn't know my show, obviously, but somebody in America sent her my name, and as a result of this, I'm going to sue her. I have seven lawyers working on this right now. Britain defamed Michael Savage. I I don't want to indulge myself any further, but this was a big, big moment in my life. It cost me uh, many nights of worry and a lot of money, and I'm still banned from entering the United Kingdom. Now they want to ban Donald Trump again for speech, not for any actions. And this is why they have Muslims in the country who call for death to the queen, uh, death to free speech, you name it. So it's a nation of cowards and fools that want to ban Donald Trump. Jason WFTL, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's your uh, topic today? Hello, uh, Mike. I I just think I absolutely agree with Donald Trump and what he said. Um, It's very... Uh, you know, honest what he's saying because he's, he's trying to protect the American people. Um, I come from a country, uh, England, and I'm an American now, but I, I come from England. And uh, you know, 20 years ago, um, if we'd have had somebody like Trump over there to stop the, the rot, because England now is, is inuated with Muslims, and you can't say a thing about them. You can't say a thing about them because if you do. You, you could be part of the this, you part of the that, and then you, you classed as a racist. We can't even fly our flag no more because we might offend some Muslims. Can you that's, imagine that's, that's the Union Jack was banned by the British government because it might offend Muslims? Can you imagine giving a country up like that without firing a shot? Yeah. Well, okay. anyway, I understand that that's happening here in America, Jason, and we all don't know if we can survive another year of the reign of terror of the junta running America right now. I'm sending you a Christmas gift. Government zero. Speaking of Christmas, I, I want to say something again. I said it to you last week. Because of the Muslim attacks on Christians and Jews around the world and the hatred being spewed against Christians and against Jews around the world, you know there's a silver lining to this. This just might make the Christian world reaffirm their own faith. This just might be God's will to make Christians recognize that unless they themselves stand up 
for their own beliefs and their own religion, their own culture, they're not going to have it at all. They're going to lose it entirely. This could be seen in a positive manner. This means that if you're a Christian, maybe you ought to wear a cross again and not be ashamed of it. Maybe you should...